Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Um, it's been a year since we bought our Norwood Sumber... <laughs> I can't talk and walk at the same time. Since we bought our Norwood sawmill. This big orange thing right here. Um, so it's been a year and you know, we've had a lot of people new to the channel since um, last year when we did the video detailing this, putting it together, all that type of stuff. So I get a lot of questions, uh, people asking, why Why do you feel you need a sawmill on your farm slash homestead? Well, let's address that. So one person had commented, the reason why I have this, because I obviously hate the planet, and I hate trees, and I, I want to see everything slashed and burned. Um, no, that's, that's not my first reason. Slashed and burned. Look, I could even cut two lifetimes all the wood on this property. So really, the primary reason has to do with what you see here. This is kind of the edge of our pasture slash forest. Again, Appalachian hardwood forest, 90 uh, out of 100 acres, about 95 of it's all wooded. Uh, we're just here on the front portion doing what we're doing with our pigs and chickens and so forth. So we're trying to create more silvo pasture. If you don't know what that term is, you can search on our channel. We've done a couple videos about it. Obviously, there's tons of stuff on YouTube, on Google. Google... <clears throat> But you can see there's a lot of there's a lot of trees here. Now we're not cutting down every single tree, of course. We're leaving select trees that produce protein that have some benefit. It could be maple for sap. It could be uh, you know hickory, beech, all those type of things. The oaks. So as we come through and clear this out, you know, I don't want. I'm not a slash and burn guy. I don't want to just cut all these trees down, pile them up with a piece of equipment, and light them on fire and move on to the next. That seems uh, very wasteful to me. So what I want to do is selectively cut and use those, uh, use that material as much as I can for projects. So let's take, for example, what we have right here. This is actually, I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but here's, here's some old woven wire. Now this is pre-us. This is pre-Red Toolhouse Farm. This is the people that had it before. We think this maybe have been a, an old pigsty that uh, where we're standing, the reason why this is flat on this hillside is uh, they had a structure, oversized doghouse it looked like, but I think it was a pig lot. Um, that being said, you know, we've got a poplar right here. I've got a little poplar here. Got another little poplar right here. Here is a red maple. So there's, there's just a ton, just right around here, there's a locust tree there. There's another red maple. Just around us, some white oaks right behind me. And there's a little beech tree. So there's just a lot of, a lot of uh, wood around here that I don't necessarily want it in this density. So what I'm going to do is this poplar is millable. So it's going to be dropped at some point, hopefully above the, uh, the fence line, <laughs> keep the metal out of it. Uh, we'll drop that. That'll go to the mill, get turned into some boards. These, um, these poplar will probably come down as well. And being this small in diameter may not go to the mill, or if they do, they'll go to the mill and just get the four sides cut off of them so we can get a post out of them or a beam. Uh, this guy, you know, a little too small. Um, I could either let him go and let him grow because poplar grows pretty fast. But he's got some damage in him. He's a little crooked. I'm, I'm sure he's got some metal in him because of uh, the old pigsty here. So it may come down. And in that situation, I don't burn poplar for firewood and the house for heat because it burns too fast. But when we do our campfires or when we're doing some stuff up at the retreat area, this guy could become firewood because you like that hot, that, that, you know, that flash, uh, that fire that gives off a lot of light and burns up quick because that's that's kind of ideal for camp campfire this maple could leave if i cut all these guys out the sugar maple is going to uh is going to make more of a canopy and, and grow faster so instead of just coming in here and cutting all these guys down putting them in a pile and burning them we want to use that material for some value so the second reason that we have a sawmill is because of what you see in the background and you say, what, a half-finished barn? Yes, exactly, a half-finished barn. We have a lot of projects that we want to build. We want to build infrastructure on this place. When we bought it, it had nothing, 100 acres and nothing other than an old junk house on the front end that was half fallen over. So we had to tear it down. So when we bought this place, it had a lot of liabilities, trash, garbage, old buildings uh, that had to come down that had no value, all that type of stuff. So clearing that out and rebuilding infrastructure. So there was no barn on the property. So we started here on the back side of our workshop with a barn. Every piece of lumber you see in that was milled from this property. 
minus the plywood that's in the loft, of course. But everything went into that barn, and we're still working on that. As we have time, we add to it. My barn has now evolved into more of an equipment storage. As I get more equipment, the tractor, the implements, uh, the things we need for raising our poultry on pasture, uh, your pig supplies, those type of things, it's taking that. We use the barn less and less for animals. We used to farrow our pigs in there. We used to do all kinds of stuff with animals there, but now that's become more of an equipment. So with that being said, we now have to have other uh, buildings for animals. Uh, um, our tractor shed, what used to be the tractor shed up here on the hill, is now going to be our new farrowing barn. Uh, as we go back to the retreat where we're building some uh, cabins and some off-grid stuff, obviously we've got a lot of need for lumber there. Uh, if you follow the channel long enough, you know that we have a uh, off-grid camp about three hours away from here. So I'm building things up there with lumber that comes from, from this land. So really, so really, reason two piggybacks off of reason one. Ooh, look at all the crickets. Chickens would love that. Um, because we have all this material I don't want to just cut down and burn, the most logical step for doing something with all that material, of course, is turning it into lumber. I could try to sell that lumber, I could try to give it away, of course, uh, but right now we have enough projects on farm that it makes sense to turn it into infrastructure, into buildings. So our third reason for having the mill is uh, to in indulge a hobby that um, I love, woodworking, but I don't get to do it as much as I used to, which I'm trying to correct that. But um, it, it, here's a perfect example. So last night, running the planer, here's some red oak. So this uh, really pretty red oak board, I've got it planed down to uh, three quarter inch. So that'll uh, be used on a project. And then this gorgeous piece of white oak. So this was a log that lay on the property for a while. I think I cut it down and, and maybe two years later milled it. And uh, you know, it's got some defect in it. Uh, um, you know, some knots, some holes. But what I really like is the wormy element of it. So the worms got into this and this is wormy white oak and I, again I won't get too geeky on all the woodworking terms uh, because that's not really what our channel is about but you know you've got this ray fleck grain from where this quarter saw pattern shows up in this white oak so it has this beautiful figuring uh, the wormy uh, holes to me add just uh, character to it even the knots and some of the checks and portions like that to me just add character to it uh, so I, you know over the last 20 years I've been able to do a, a lot of woodworking projects some for our house uh, some for you know, our own our own use, but a lot I've sold and, and I've generated a, a decent amount of revenue off of my woodworking hobby. So that kind of justifies the mill as well. Now, obviously, as you know, I've only had the mill for a year, but I had another Norwood mill. For those of you who are new to the channel, I had another Norwood mill I bought 20 years ago uh, and traded it to my brother um, probably 12, 13 years ago, but still had access to it. Uh, but as you can see, and I know you guys, every time I show my wood shop, you guys blow me up in the comments, and that's fine because it, it's, it motivates me to hopefully clean it up. But uh, the, the issue I have is over 20 years, as you have wood, you're like, oh, that's a pretty piece of wood. I can't, I can't bring myself to throw that away or, or get rid of it. So it ends up in corners, and it just ends up everywhere. So I've, I've got to figure out my wood storage better. You know, you got an issue with farming work and farming supplies rubbing against woodworking and woodshop supplies. So I, I've, my woodshop has lost its identity right now. So we got to get that figured out. So the fourth reason we have a sawmill really rubs against the uh, comment I initially made about people saying I'm a, I hate the planet, I hate the world, all that type of stuff. I want to see everything burn. Having our sawmill and cutting down these trees really improves our forest on our property. For example, I'm standing here right at the edge. This, where, where I'm here, is, is what I consider our yard. The house is right behind the camera. So this is kind of technically our yard. Uh, I'm standing, you can see this electric fence at my feet. This is the single strand that keeps our pigs um, out of the yard. So they have access to this area. And we've got a little bit of underbrush here that, <coughs> that we need to clear out. But the point I want to make is behind here, you see this white oak. So I intentionally left this white oak. There were this was all thick trees. You can see I got a little sycamore here I got to take out. It's actually been, uh, it's, it's coming back from being pollarded. It was a huge sycamore. So took that out, took out some other things. I had a cherry tree actually uproot. So certain things cleared out here. Well, now this white oak is, used to be just kind of a toothpick and came up to this initial canopy. Well, now it's just flourishing. There's there's new branches coming out lower, so it's producing a broader canopy. So it's going to yield more acorns 
for this pasture area. So one tree is going to increase its yield of acorns and leaves, and it's just it's just going to be it's going to allow itself to flourish. It's it's going to have a much broader canopy, so it's going to have much better production on the property than it was if I had left it alone and, and it was densely competing with uh, all the trees around it. So it's really like the concept of a garden. If you, you, know, you plant seeds, if you plant a garden, you, know, you, you put a row of carrot seeds in, you don't just let them all grow up, you go through and thin them out. So the carrots left behind will flourish. And that's the concept we have here. We want to thin some of the trees out, some of the undesirables, so the rest that we leave behind will flourish. Well, I hope that answers the questions of why we uh, invested in a sawmill. All right, take care, everybody.